Hi everyone, my name is Mohamed Sidki. I'm the AIA Samatir County Chapter President. I wanna welcome you all to our last ARE 5.0 study session for the year. Today, we are very excited to have Joy Chi Chen with us as she will be discussing door hardware. Uh, next slide. Um, before we start, I'd like to make a few chapter announcements. First, we wanna say thank you to our sponsors, our ARE series sponsor, Heather Young Architects, our Platinum Chapter sponsor, Leanne Braze Engineering. Our gold chapter sponsors, Roaming Engineers and MN Builders, and our silver chapter sponsor, DaVinci Marble and BKG Structural Engineers. Next. Okay, uh, session rules. Please mute yourself to reduce background noise. The speaker will pause at the end of each section to give time for questions. Also feel free to add questions in the chat box below at any time. Do not discuss any specific exam questions as not permitted by NCARB and know that the session is being recorded. Next. Okay, a little bit about our guest speaker. So Joy Chi Chen is a licensed California architect. She works with DES architects and engineers and has worked on multiple project types. She loves working on construction documents and specs. Joy Chi passed all her ARE exams on the first attempt and would love to share some of her knowledge and help others pass their exams. And uh, Joy, she actually is my coworker and a good friend of mine, so be nice with the questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joy, you can take it from here. Thank you, Muhammad, for the introduction. And good evening, everyone. As Muhammad mentioned, I passed my PPD and PDD exam on my first try earlier this year. So today I'm going to share some of the notes and the knowledge about door hardware with you. So today's topic is door hardware. It is a small topic in the whole PPD, PDD scope, but it is also a very practical topic that you may benefit from for your everyday work. I also would like to disclaim that I am not a door hardware specialist. I'm sharing my study notes and some of the basics you need to know for your general practice. But for any project specific questions, I suggest that you consult with a hardware specialist. So with no delay, let's just jump right in. There are many types of doors. This graphic is showing the door the doors classified by types of operation. There are swing doors, sliding doors, folding doors, overhead doors, revolving doors, and cetera. The most common door type is a swinging door. And today we will focus on the hinged doors. Take a simple swing door as an example. There are three major components of a door system. There are the door itself, we call it door leaf, um, the door frame around it, and hardware. So each must be coordinated with the other components and be appropriate for the circumstances and the design intent. So look at the graphic here. You can identify there's door head, door jam, and door seal, and threshold. On the door jam, you have two sides, and we call it um, strike side and hinge side. You can see here the strike side of the door. Although this graphic only has very few hardware showing up, it is important to identify these basic terms before we dive into the door hardware. Okay, here is um, an example you may have seen on your project. I have a door schedule on the top, a partial floor plan on the left, and a hardware schedule on the right. Let's look at the door schedule. So I have the first three columns here. They are the door number, door location, and door hand. Those three items you can identify from uh, my floor plan. So the door number is identified and 
and um, the room it swings into is identified. And the hand, you can determine the hand of the door by looking at the floor plan. Um, next few columns are related to the door itself. So the door leaf, where I have the elevation, um, the width, the height, the thickness, materials, finishes, and um, light kit. So those are the door component. And then I have frame component. So the frame material, the frame finish, profile, its elevation, and then what the detail, head detail, gem detail, threshold detail, and then um, which wall it is in. The partition type, um, the thickness of the wall, um, the label of it, and um, this is about the car reader. So, um, but the most important thing is the hardware group that we are going to discuss in this presentation. So hardware group I identified as um, numbers here or a combination of letters and numbers. So I have a group 01 and you can relate it to the hardware schedule that I have hardware group 01. I have another group um, called E3. So in each hardware group, um, I have a bunch of hardware elements. So we are going to um, discuss each of them in this presentation. So I, I know that there's a lot of information on the door schedule and hardware schedule. So um, we will break into pieces, explain each element. But first thing first, um, I have a question for you. So look at the door schedule here. I have the hand. What does that mean? My first question is, use the graphic on the right. Please identify the door handing in order. Right hand, right hand reverse, left hand, left hand reverse. So I have one, two, three, four, four doors. Which door is right hand door? Which door is left hand door? And uh, left hand reverse and right hand reverse. Please identify them. There's a poll showing up. And we will give one minute. Is that good, Joichi? Mm -hmm. One minute? Yeah. Okay. So 16% voted. Thirty-two percent. Okay, we'll give ten more seconds, then we will end polling. Okay, uh, share results. Ooh, not bad. <laughs> Most people get it right. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, so the right answer is E. Okay, the hand of a door is determined from the outside of the door. So, the exterior of a building is considered outside, as is the hallway side of a room door or a lobby side of a door opening into a room. In situations where the distinction is not clear, the outside is considered the side of the door where the hinge is not visible. So um, to determine that, when you're standing outside the door and looking at the door, if the hinge is on the left, 
and swing away from you, meaning that you are pushing it to open, then it's a left hand door. Same idea, if you're standing outside, the hinge is on your right hand side and you push that open, that's a right hand door. If you stand outside, hinge on the left, but you have to pull it, it swing towards you, that's a left hand reverse door. And same idea, if you stand outside, the hinge on your right hand side, it swing towards you, then it's a right hand reverse door. And you may wonder why do we need to know the door handing? The handing is used by the specifier, door hardware supplier, manufacturer to identify or to indicate exactly what kind of hardware must be supplied for a specific opening. It is because some hardware will only work on a door that swings in a particular way. So let's go back to my door schedule. Um, let's check the work. So I can identify door 113. That is the door here into a storage room because when I stand outside this room, the hinge is on my left hand side and it's swing away from me. So it's a left hand door, um, abbreviate as LH. So I will pause here to see if anyone has questions about door handling. Take us no. <laughs> okay, that's easy. Then we move on to our next slide. So hardware is a vital part of any door opening assembly. In general, hardware can be grouped um, according to the function is served based on the following list. Handing the door, we use hinge, pivot, or a combination of pivot and closer. Operating the door, we can use handles. We have used um, latch set, push plate, and push bar. Closing the door, we have a door closer and a combination of pivot and closer. Locking the door, we will use lock set, deadbolt, flush bolt, electric locks, and other special devices. Sealing the door, you will see weather stripping, sound seals, smoke seals. Protecting the door, you will see kick plate, corner protections, and similar material. So when we talk about the door hardware group as an essential part of your door schedule, we are really talking about the combination of these elements. Therefore, we need to understand each of them their function and the circumstances you apply them. So the first thing is handing the door. So hinges is the most common method of attaching a door to its frame. Hinges are also referred to as butts because they are usually attached to the butt edge of the door. Hinges consist of two leaves with an odd number of the knuckles on one leaf and an even number on the knuckles on the other. The knuckles are attached with a pin and the pin and knuckles form the barrel of the hinge, which is finished with a tip. So you can see the barrel here. There are four basic types of hinge, full modest, half modest, full surface, and half surface. Full mortise is the most common type that has both leaves fully mortised into the frame, edge of the door. Let's see, it is fully concealed. Half mortise hinge leaves a surface applied to the frame and mortised into the door edge. So this is applied to the surface and the it is modest into the door. Half modest hinge leaves are surface applied to the frame 
Oh, sorry, half uh, half surface hinge have one leaf mounted on the face of the door and the other leaf molded into the frame. So um, you see the surface mounted on the door, but um, molded into the frame. And the full surface hinge applied to the surface of both door and frame. You can see here. The various type of hinges are used when either the door or frame cannot be molded. For example, a half molded hinge may be bolted or weld to a heavy steel frame. You can see here, this is a steel frame and you cannot mold it into it, so you have to surface apply it. So we can go back to our hardware schedule. So when you look at our hardware schedule, the hinge are listed here. So with the hinge, you will see the number here and um, the description of it. So first, let's look at the number of hinges. The number of hinges is determined by the height of the door. Doors up to 60 inches high require two hinges. Doors from 60 inches to 90 inches require three hinges. And the doors 90 inches to 120 inches require four hinges. And then we can look into the, oh, so here you can see I have um, A standard hinges because I have two doors in, in this group. So each door will receive four hinges because I think I have um, a foot door here. The door is quite tall, so I need four hinges. And here I have three doors so you will see there are nine uh, standard hinges and I also have electrified hinges. So in total, I have 12 hinges um, and I have three doors. So each door will receive four hinges as well. We'll talk about electrified hinges in the later uh, slide. Next number you will see. So here you, I have hanger BB, that's the the model type, but um, four and a half inch by four and a half inches is the size of the hinge. So the first number is the length of the hinge. It is the actually the length of the barrel. So vertically, that's the length. And the second number is the width of the hinge. So the width of the hinge is identified when it's fully open. So this is the width of the hinge. So both the length and the width are determined by the door width and the door thickness. So if I have a three foot wide door and the thickness is one and three quarter inch, I will use a four and a half inch by four and a half inches hinge. Okay, so that's so much about the hinge. Um, you will see other numbers. Those are about the finish. Um, I will explain that in the next few slides as well. I will also pause here to see if anyone have questions about hinges. The number of hinges, the size of hinges, the type of hinges. Actually, I have a, I have a question. Yeah. So when when you select the hanger BB one one six eight eight four, mm -hmm. what does that mean? That's the model number. So hanger is the manufacturer, and okay. um, that's the model number they have. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So what you gonna? So this is a submittal, right? So when they submit that to you, what you care about is the size of it and how many they have. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so when would you consider uh, choosing half surface versus uh, full surface? I mean, other than, um, I guess, applying the hinge to uh, the jam? 
um, whether it's metal or not. But is, is there is there a, an advantage to choosing one over the other? Uh, I know a full mortise, you probably want to do it on an exterior door, right? Um, mm -hmm. but, and uh, also, you, uh -huh. yeah. And also, I think architects, we care about the look of it, right? Mm. So, um, to me, like, um, if I can use the most conceal, that's the best I can I can choose. Okay. If possible. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I would, and I would add, if it's. Uh, for security reasons, you for exterior doors, for example, you want to use the full mortise because you don't want someone to come and open that hinge and then open right. the door and access the building. So that would be besides statics, it's uh, it's more secure if 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 you have it full mortise, for example, when it's for exterior or for a door that you want to make sure no one can access it. Yeah, okay. Good point, Muhammad. Okay. So that can be a question, right? In the exam, or was like, which hinge is more secure or for exterior door? Yeah, definitely A. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Hi. Hello, I have a question. Sure. Um, and then on the exam, is it gonna show exactly like what you're seeing right there on the presentation? The um, diagram, the pictures, is it gonna look exactly like that on the exam? You just gotta f identify it. <laughs> Muhammad, <laughs> we 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 don't really know what you will get exactly in the exam. It's, okay. It, it, it might be anything. It might be anything. But this is the concept, basically. This is the idea. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Before we move on to the next topic. Take a note. So I have a question for you. So our next topic is operating the door. So here's the second question. Which door handle is not in compliance with accessibility design? A lever or a knob? So we'll give 30 seconds because it's an easy question. 50% mm -hmm. um, potent. We'll give five more seconds. And, and pulling. Okay. Yay. Yeah, 89% chose the. Mm -hmm. Correct mm -hmm. So the correct answer is B, lever, okay. Um, per 2010 ADA standard section 4.13.9 door hardware, handles, pulls, latches, locks, and other operating devices on an accessible door shall have a shape that is easy to grasp with one hand and does not require tight grasping tight pinching or twisting of the width uh, to operate. Lever operated mechanism, push type mechanism and U-shaped handles are acceptable designs. When sliding doors are fully open, operating hardware shall be exposed and usable from both sides. Hardware required for accessible door pass passage shall be mounted no higher than 48 inches above finished floor. The answer is B, a lever. Move on to um, next, latches and lock, uh, lock set. Latch set and lock set are devices to hold a door in a closed position and lock it. A latch set only holds the door in place with no provisions for locking. It has a beveled latch extended from the face of the door edge and automatically engage the strike mounted in the frame when the door is closed. So 
this is the match bolt you need to be able to see match bolt match bolt a lock set is a special mechanism that allows the door to be locked with a key or something. So there are four types of latches and locks. A mortise lock set, pre-assembled, board, and interconnected. A mortise lock is installed in a rectangular area cut out of the door. It is usually more secure than a board lock and offers a much wider variety of locking options. Mortis lock allows the use of a deadbolt, latch bolt, both of which can be retracted with a single operation. A variety of knobs and levers handle design can be used um, in the basic mechanism. In our case, we will only use levers or ADA. Pre-assembled lock and latches come from a factory as a complete unit. They are slid into the notch made in the edge of the door and require very little adjustment. Pre-assembled locks are very seldom to use anymore and they are often found in older buildings. Board lock. Board lock and latches are installed by boring holes through the face of the door and from the edge of the door to the other board opening. They are relatively easy to install and are less expensive than modest lock, but they offer fewer operating functions than the modest lock. They are generally used in residential and commercial, a small commercial project. So in your home, you always see the board lock um, a lot. Interconnected lock have a cylinder lock and a deadbolt. Um, so the you have this latch bolt and dead bolt. And um, the two locks are interconnected so that a single action of turning the knob or lever handle on the inside can release both bolts here. So I have the third question for you. Um, the type of the lock set that is most secure is a unit lock, cylindrical lock, rim lock, or modest lock? Which one is more secure? Okay, 70% voted, we'll give Five more seconds and then we'll end polling. And Yay, this time ninety five percent. Yeah, that's good. Good, good job. So, yes, a modest lock is the most secure type of lock set. So, um, in the exam, you might see those names or terminology that you are not familiar with. But as long as you know the correct one, then um, you will be able to pick the right answer. And others might just be distractions for you. So, let's look at here. Modest lock, um, the answer is D, modest lock, are the most secure type of lock set because the mechanism is concealed within the leaf of the door. Unit locks are installed into the notch and cut into the leaf of the door, um, just like the pre-assembled uh, lock that we just talked about. A cylinder lock is installed um, through the hole and drilled into the leaf. This is the 
the board log that we also talk about. And you may um, interfere other names like a tubular log and things like that, but they are not the most secure because you only have one small hole in the door um, versus mortis log, you cut a whole piece and um, it's really hard to break it. So a rim log is mounted on the surface, uh, on the face of the leaf. So this is definitely not secure and um, it applied to the face of the door. So um, can be easily take off because each of these type lock set uh, leaves portion of the mechanical mechanism exposed. So it will be easily tempered and uh, with and are not secure as the modest lock set. Okay. So I have um, another graphic showing the lock set. So this is a graphic from um, Schlag um, catalog from one of our uh, manufacturer. So um, this graphic shows the assembly of the lock set as a section view and um, it is it is pretty intuitive like uh, you have a key lock here. It, um, this is the legend showing what does that mean um, and you will see the knob here. Uh, I would suggest that we only use levers for ADA, but for graphic, it shows a, a knob, but you know that's the handle of it. And from the inside here, you have a thumb turn and another lever, because um, this is a section view. So you have that bolt um, and legs here. So my Fourth question for you is, please place the lock set above in order of from a corridor to a room, office, bedroom, storeroom, and staircase. So which lock set you will use for an office, bedroom, storeroom, and staircase? So I have a small graphic here, just for you to reference back. This might take a bit longer. Another 10 seconds, 20 seconds. What do you think, Joichi? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we'll give another 10 seconds. We have almost 70% voted. And we are ending now. Okay, let's look at the answer. The answer is B. Yeah, most people get it right. Yep. Okay, so we can look at each lock set. If you're from a corridor entering an office, typically you will need a key to access to your office, to secure your office. And um, when you are inside office, you might need a thumb turn, so you don't want other people to come in. So that's why you will pick this um, lock set 
is also called um, office and inner entry lock. You can read the description of it. Um, the latch bolt retracted by lever knob from either side unless outside lever is locked by a key or a symptom. With outside locked latch bolt retracted by key or inside lever, outside lever locked until unlocked by symptom or key. Ensure a um, latch that bolt um, that locks latch bolt when the door is closed. Inside lever always free for immediate egress. So next one is when you go into a bedroom. So for the bedroom, because you are inside your unit, you probably don't need to lock it, key key it. But when you are inside your bedroom. You may want to um, thumb turn it when you are in the bedroom. So that's the thumb turn inside. But you also have this little guy. This is, um, you can go back to our graphic. This is called emergency turn piece. So um, sometimes you have the kids inside the bedroom accidentally um, lock themselves. And this emergency key can help to open the door and save them. Um, so next is the storeroom. So the storeroom, you will need a key to secure the room, but you probably don't need a symptom when you are inside the storeroom. That's why we choose um, this type. And um, for the stair, it's kind of a passageway, way. So it's called passage uh, latch. The latch retracted um, from both sides all the time. You don't need any locks. Um, you don't want to lock yourself in the stair. And uh, you, the stair is just for egress, so you don't need any key to operate it. So that is how I select those uh, lock set. I would highly recommend to check the Ember book, 40 minutes of competence. Channel. Um, the door lock is on the 004 topic, and there's a link below. Muhammad, if you can paste that to the chat box, that'd be great. So people can check um, afterwards. Um, quick question um, yes. Are we going to be having these uh, slides or? Um, whatever is, is being presented right now? So um, this presentation is um, recorded, so you can always go back and watch the video. Okay. But um, yeah. Um, so I, I will be uh, posting this to our YouTube channel over this weekend. Uh, just go to YouTube, search for AIA, Samatir County. And you should see this recording for this one and all the previous, like all this year recordings, you will see it on the YouTube channel. There is one bar for like all the ARD study sessions. Perfect, perfect, thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look back at our door hardware schedule. So you will see I have the storeroom lock set identified here. And again, um, the top is the quantity of it. I have three doors, I have three lock set. And um, same, um, I have the lock set identified here. And you can see um, sometimes even in the same submittal, they call it differently, although they refer to a similar um, model, the L9080. So, but here is LV9080. And you will also see the door handing here, left-handed, um, left-handed reverse. So that, oh, sorry. That also indicate like um, specific hardware is um, only used for a specific opening. Okay. Um, I will pause again here if you have other questions about the lock set. Yeah, um, I got a question on the difference between the mortise and the interconnected. Um, I, I don't understand it still. What's the difference between the two? 
Yeah, so these two, and you can see from the graphic mortise, you have a big piece, and this is one, like one big piece here. But um, interconnected, it has two independent pieces, but they just interconnect with, um, with another piece. Um, it's called interconnect mechanism housing. So uh, you can, this is less secure because you, you kind of can disassemble it separately, but here it's one piece, right? So um, that's the difference. And you have a lot of choice here. You can select uh, your cylinder lock and you can have other options about um, those latch bolts, but you don't have those options here with the interconnected locks. Oh, great, thanks, that definitely helps, okay. Other questions? Okay, move on to the next topic. So here, <laughs> other type of hardware. So it's the same door hardware schedule. We already talked about the hinge. We talk about the cylinder lock. We talk about the uh, lock set and um, now it leaves us the sur surface closer, exit device, threshold, weather stripping. What are those? And uh, what are the function of those elements? So the easiest one is the threshold. You often see the threshold. Um, this is an image of it, but there's a ADA requirement at the threshold. So um, ADA section three, uh, 4.13.8, threshold at doorway. Threshold at doorway shall not exceed three quarter inch in height for exterior sliding doors or half an inch for other types of doors. Raised threshold and floor level changes at accessible doorways shall be beveled with a slope no greater than one to two. So that's, what you see from the picture here. So this threshold is sloped and is beveled edge. When you change, you have change in level, if the change is up to quarter inch, it can be vertical without any edge treatment. But when this, the change is between quarter inch to half an inch, you have to have a, a slope that no greater than one to two and anything above half an inch in change level shall be accomplished by means of a ramp that complies uh, with the ramp requirement. Okay, that's the threshold. And I think that's my last question for you today is please identify the coordinator in the images below. Coordinator is a hardware piece. I have one, two, three, four, five, seven pieces here. Which one is a coordinator? I, Joichi, I didn't see the answer on the poll. So you identify by letter. So A is this image, B is this image, C is this image. D, E, and F, and G. But I don't see G in the pool. Oh. Oh, I see that. <laughs> yeah, it's missing. Uh, Sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, you can eliminate one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Definitely oh. G is not the answer. <laughs> G, G is not the correct answer. Don't worry about G. <laughs> we just made oh. it easier. That that was my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it wrong, right? <laughs> okay, we'll give ten more seconds. Uh, 
and well, and that was my guess. Yay. I think we got most people correct yeah. here again. Except for Ryan. <laughs> So, uh, thanks for pointing this out. This is actually, uh, so someone told me that G was the coordinator. Do you, do you know what that's called? Yeah. So, let's go to the next slide. Astr ah, okay. Thank okay. you. Right. So, I identified um, all these elements. So, coordinator, so both coordinator and astrogout are work um, on a double door. We talk about the single door all the time in this presentation, but these two are for the double door. So that's a trick here. <laughs> um, anyway, so coordinator is used um, on a double door. When you have two leaves, which one uh, close first and which one close next? And when you have an extra goal here, this is the extra piece on the leaf, right? So it is important to know that the piece has, uh, the leaf has the astragal piece have to close first, then the other follows. Otherwise you, you have, um, if you close the, the other piece first, then the astragal will be in the way and you cannot fully close the door. Make sense? The coordinator helps um, which one close first and which one close next. And you can see here, the mechanism of it is like one one leg and the other. That's for the two um, door leaves. Um, okay, we can go to other door hardwares. So the image here is a door surface closer. It's usually mounted on the top of the door. It has a leg and the in the frame. Um, pending hardware, you must be very familiar with that. Um, automatic door bottom that help to seal the door at the bottom. Weather stripping is another kind of um, seal on the door. So usually it is mounted on the exterior door. When um, the rainwater falls in, it will fall off. Um, away from your door. And also um, this little brush here will brush out the dust. Uh, threshold, we already talked about uh, door stop, door stop and bumper. So the left one is a floor mounted door stop and the right hand side one is a bumper on the wall. We talk about the Atrigo. It is used on the one leaf of the double door. So, yeah, most of you get the answer correct. Congratulations. <laughs> Do you have any questions about other type of hardware? Okay. Move on to the next electronic hardware. Electronic hardware include devices that controls or monitor door opening using electronic, uh, electric, and ele or electromechanical means. An electric lock maintains a mortise or board lock set in a locked position until a signal is activated by some type of regulating device. Regulating device can include a wall switch, push button, car reader, key switch, computerized controls, automatic time devices, security console, and other sophisticated control devices. Electronic locks can also be specified so that they automatically open if there's a power failure. In other cases, uh, in either cases, the inside knob and handle mechanically unlatches the door for exiting at any time. Electric locks requires the use of electric hinges or other power transfer devices to make the low voltage wiring connections from the door frame 
to the mechanism in the door. On our door hardware schedule, you see here, um, I have a electrified hinge identified here because all these rooms, I have car readers. So um, that is about electronic hardware. It's pretty straightforward. So you have the controls to the hinge and, and then you need to provide low voltage power for it. Next. Hardware um, finishes. Hardware is available in a variety of finishes. The choice of which is depend on primarily on the appearance desired, but also its ability to withstand use and weathering. Hardware finishes have been standardized according to the numbers that are divided by the federal government, is the US um, designation, and, and the Builder Hardware Manufacturer Association identifies BHMA number. So this is a, a list of those numbers and it's finished described. And so that comes to our last column on the hardware schedule is the finish of it. So you can see here, I have US 2060 identified here. It's equal to 626 um, from the BHMA number. It's a Saturn chrome um, plate finish. I also have a different finish called 630, which is a Saturn stainless steel finish. Okay, anyone has questions about the finish and electronic hardware? Okay, good. Okay, then just to recap, today we talk about um, the door hardware, um, hardware schedule, how to read the door schedule. Um, we had focus on the hand of the door, the hardware group, we identify each element, um, what the function for it and where to use it. Um, I think that, that is, I we have a few more minutes. So I have a bonus <laughs> slide for you it's about the door clearance. So you may want to review the door clearance since we're talking about the doors before your exam as well. So be clear about the door from the push side um, or it's the pull side, how you approach a door. The clearance will be different if it's a front approach or side approach on which side it approach. So, um, for the exam, you might encounter a question about the door clearance in any of those matter. Okay, so just get yourself familiar with those uh, clearance numbers. And um, I think that's everything I have for today's presentation. Thank you so much, Joichi for an excellent presentation. I really enjoyed it. There were so good, good information here. Um, yeah, thank you so much for this. Uh, uh, so do we have any question from the chat box? No, uh, let me see. I think there was a question, just a minute. There was a question that was in the beginning. Uh, how do you determine the size of the hinge? That was the only question I saw. The only question I saw. Okay, we can go back to the slide before we take off. So, yes, the size of the hinge, I have it here, four and a half inches by four and a half inches, right? So, um, the size of the hinge is determined by the door width. So, if you are interested, there's a table 
like how wide the door should be and um, what the size can be accommodate um, that width. And also the thickness is with it as well. It is from, you can take a look uh, if you have the ballast book. It is a table 42.2 um, that you can determine how um, the hinge height is and the width. So I have, that's the length, right? So that's the height, we also call it length. That's determined by the width of the door and the thickness of the door. There's a table that we can check um, which one is which. And for, for the width, which is, let me go back to my slide. For this side, it's also determined by the thickness of the door. I believe if your uh, thickness is two times of the thickness of the, uh, the door plus half an inch. So um, I have one and three quarter, two times of it is what? Um, three and a half plus half an inch and plus the, the size of the bevel. So it all adds up to four and a half inch. That's how we determine the size of it. Okay, I hope that answers your question. So let me ask something while we're, we're in this, this um, question. So yeah. you said that the weight uh, um, may be a, a factor that uh, we choose a specific uh, hinge for, it. correct? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so how we determine determined how, how uh, this hardware, is it like supposed to be like a, a heavy duty uh, um, uh, hinge or how we determine, determine it accordingly? So you talk about two things, heavy duty, it's also uh, not just about the weight and also the finish of it, right? So some finish is just by nature, it's not heavy duty, like wood door. You won't think about it as a heavy duty door. You may think about a metal door, right? So um, the finish of it is uh, one piece and the weight, yes, um, the weight of it is also another piece, but um, from the study material I have, um, I so it says it's determined by the size, meaning the width and height of it. It doesn't talk about the weight um, for some reason, but I think you have a good point. Weight might, um, might play in a role here as well. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we end for the day? Okay, then I think uh, again, thank you so much, Joichi. Really good, re really excellent presentation. Uh, a, a lot of good information here, uh, not, not just for someone who's taken the exam, but for any architects, it's, uh, it's really good, it's very useful. And uh, thank you all for attending, thank you for attending this session. Uh, we have these sessions once a month, so this is our last for this year. Um, best of luck with your exams, happy holidays, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next year. Happy holidays. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.